Okay, good morning. So we've got a, a young filly here. She's probably, uh, we're thinking a yearling, year and a half maybe, um, not quite two years old. And she was recently rescued about two months ago, and uh, we'll show some pictures of her body condition score before and after. But if you look in here, she developed this, this pretty acute, um, fairly severe swelling on what's called the maxilla. That's this part of the, the upper jaw. And we can see here it's pretty normal, but on her right side she has a lot of swelling. So normally when we see this type of, of swelling, until proof and otherwise, it's pretty safe to assume that it's a dental problem. It can be trauma sometimes, a kick or a wound or maybe a bite, but uh, it's really important to rule out that it's not a dental problem. So we're going to show you guys what we did here uh, and what we saw. So here we can see uh, this is a tooth that is affected. We can see this lucency, which is a darker spot here. We've got some bone loss that's all consistent with what's called a periapical abscess. Peri just means around, apex is the around the roots of the tooth. So we've got a big infection here. Once it reaches this point, antibiotics do no good. Um, they can maybe quiet it down, but they will not resolve the issue. And so there's really only one solution in this case, and that's to take out the tooth. Here we've got another radiograph, uh, a little bit different view. This is from the top down. We can see around this tooth how we have all of this uh, darker area and that signifies bone loss. And then here we've got the swelling uh, and periosteal reaction. So you can see that this tooth definitely has a significant infection around it. So the only treatment again is, is extraction. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we'll number first with the nerve block and then we'll take the tooth out standing. Something that's important to realize, I keep reiterating, is that in today's day and age, there's never a need to lay a horse down under general anesthesia to take these teeth out. Uh, I've been doing this 20 years, and in 20 years, there's only been two horses that we've had to work on under general anesthesia, and they had some really uh, other issues going on. Uh, but out of thousands, literally, all these procedures, sinus surgeries, everything can be done standing. That has less cost for the owner and then less risk for the animal. So um, it's, uh, it's, it's really, anytime somebody recommends general anesthesia, you want to uh, rule that out. So the other misconception is that uh, it takes a huge team and a university and a bunch of surgeons and, and staff to do these types of procedures. That's, uh, that, you know, the, if you have more people, that's great. But honestly, I do hundreds of these by myself, literally totally by myself or just myself and the owners. In this case, and the owner here is the one shooting the video. <laughs> so um, with enough experience and the right type of training, these procedures can be done very effectively with very good outcomes um, just with one person or, or two people. So that's not necessarily ideal, but it can be done. What matters is again the training. So here what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to numb the we're going to numb the teeth on this side so she doesn't feel anything during the procedure. So this is a maxillary nerve block. Okay, so we'll give that a few minutes to kick in and now she's not going to feel any, anything on that side. So here we found, we're looking on the outside of the tooth and we found a drain track where when I put this probe in, it goes right up alongside the tooth. Um, and so this is a very important finding. So something that's super, super important uh, for other veterinarians out there is that I see places and, and surgeons and practices that extract teeth sometimes based on just radiographs alone. Um, for me, it's very, very, it's not only critical, it's paramount. Uh, I pretty much will not pull a tooth unless I can match the clinical presentation with the oral exam, with the radiographs where everything makes sense. If everything makes sense and extraction is the only option, then we know for sure we're doing the right thing. If you are just going based on clinical signs or radiographs alone, sometimes you can, you can uh, make a mistake, pull a tooth that doesn't need to be pulled or maybe uh, just pull the wrong tooth altogether. So in this case, 
we have a, a bump uh, on the face. Then we can see on the oral exam, we have a drain tract that signifies that we've got pus and infection draining into the mouth. And then on the radiographs, we can see evidence of that. Everything matches up in the same place. In this case, it's what's called a 107 tooth, which is uh, technically the, the third premolar. And so we know for sure that that's a tooth that has to come out and that's the only treatment available. So here we can see that we've got the tooth pulled down and, and loose. So we're going to take it out and there it goes. All right, so we've got the tooth out and we're going through some of the pathology now. The procedure went well. It took about 20, 25 minutes uh, once she was numb to actually get the tooth out. And if you look in here, we'll zoom in and, and we'll see. This is the, the part of the tooth that's in the mouth. And then this is the part around where the roots would be. But because it's a young horse, the roots haven't totally branched out and formed yet. And in horses, they have, in their upper teeth, they have two structures, two holes called infundibula. A single one is an infundibulum, and they're both infundibula. These holes, they actually are, they're normal, and they go all the way up to uh, the root. But normally, what they would look like is they would be completely sealed over with enamel, just like this, completely closed off, okay? And so any bacteria from the mouth can't really make it past here. In this case, what caused her problem, which is what I suspected, um, is that she has an open infundibulum. And so if you watch, I'll put this file in here in the infundibulum. So this is the mouth side again. And this file comes right out. You can see it right here. Um, see, I'm going in and out. Excuse the flies. We're in Texas in the summer, and there's a lot of, a lot of flies right now. It's hot. But there's where that file comes out. So this infundibulum never actually sealed off um, and there's a there's a great uh, paper uh, written by dr pierce out of the uk he was the first one that kind of presented that in some cases what you can do is you can go ahead and clean out that infundibulum and seal it but her because of the extent of decay and infection uh present i didn't think she would be a good candidate for that um and so we we extracted the tooth Another thing that, that needs to be kept in mind uh, for veterinarians out there and surgeons that if you're pulling teeth on young horses, what happens is the tooth is not fully mineralized and formed. And so you have a lot of soft tissue and a lot of pulp. So the, these are actually some of the pulps which would normally be inside the tooth. Okay, so that, that pulp would actually go inside the tooth um, and there's a lot of cells around here that are eventually going to become mineralized and going to become tooth-like material like dentin and cementum. So what happens is now we took this tooth out, it's really important to go in and clean out that pulp and as much, much of the cells as possible because any little cells left behind can min mineralize. Now they, vary, they pretty much never cause a problem, uh, at least in my experience. But what can happen is two or three years down the road when you know, everything will be healed here in a couple of weeks. But in, in say three years, if somebody takes radiographs of, of this horse, they may see some mineralized tissue in that socket. It won't be infected, won't be causing a problem, but it'll look like tooth fragments were left behind. That's actually not the case. What's going on is there's some cells that we can't even identify right now that are going to mineralize over the coming months to years. Uh, it's an incidental finding, but it's something that's important to communicate to the owner, especially if you're thinking about selling the horse one day, we're on a pre-purchase exam, uh, something could be noted. So, um, so that's an interesting case of what's called a patent infundibulum. And, uh, and back, basically bacteria from the mouth was going straight up through the infundibulum, causing an apical abscess, and then pus was draining back down into the mouth. So she should be much happier now.